everyone, welcome back to Let's Talk. My name is John, and today here on the channel, we're going to be talking about 2023's Showing Up and its brand new 4K Blu-ray that just came out. So this film was directed by Kelly Reichardt. It also was co-written by her. It stars Michelle Williams, Hong Chow, and it also features Andre Benjamin, or Andre 3000, and plenty of other great actors that appear in this film. But Michelle Williams is where I want to start with this one, because Michelle Williams has a world-class performance in this movie, and it's very fascinating because this movie actually had its initial premiere last May, May of 2022, at the Cannes Film Festival, where it was even nominated for numerous awards, including the Palme d'Or. But the film didn't actually receive its release until almost one year later in April of 2023. And now what's fascinating about that is The Fablemans, which actually premiered after this movie, got Michelle Williams an Academy Award nomination, even though she did that performance after this movie. And you can argue that this really just illustrates how good of an actress Michelle Williams is. The range in her, we don't appreciate her enough. The fact that she gave that beautiful, flashy performance in The Fablements, and then she plays a reserved sculpture artist in this movie. Very, you know, quiet to herself. She really does a lot of her character communications, like we feel what's inside of her more than what she's actually portraying on the screen, while in The Fablements, everything comes out. That's the flashy performance. That definitely does catch the Academy's eye, and she deserved that nomination. But I will argue that her performance in this movie is actually better than that one, and hopefully she receives an Academy Award nomination in 2023 for this one as well because she definitely deserves it and she plays lizzie in this movie a sculpture artist you know she's really big into ceramics i took a ceramics class in high school that stuff is really 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 hard i think ghost made that look way easier than it actually is i give a lot of credit to these artists that could do that I, I just i wasn't made for it i was terrible i made a mug it was awful nobody wanted it so you know i can really appreciate that and this movie is really paying tribute to the oregon art scene actually it was filmed at the oregon college of arts that isn't open anymore so it was like a real send-off kelly reichardt said to that area of the world and its art scene. And you know what? It's a very beautiful movie. This isn't a movie that's going to be for everybody. It's very much a comedy drama, and it feels like an A24 film, even though they didn't pick it up until later. So it's weird that it feels just like the kind of movie that A24 would put out. You know, a slowed down, low budget indie art house film. You know, it really is just a character study of Lizzie and the people around her. It's really just a peek into her life. That's really all this is. You know, we spend a few days with her as she's gearing up for this big show that she's going to be having at the end of the week, but everything just keeps getting in her way. She really wants to concentrate on this really giving us a peek behind what it's like for the life of an artist a struggling artist at that because myself i actually have experienced this a lot where you know you want to do something but you got your regular job you got your friends you got your family and all that stuff starts to interfere when you're just trying to concentrate on doing the art but that's just not how the world works and i really think this film captured that perfectly and hong chow is also amazing in this i wouldn't be surprised if she gets a best supporting actress nod hong chow has been one of her most underappreciated actresses as well she gets probably the more flashier performance in this movie because one of the big conflicts in this movie is just that lizzie and hong chow's character you know that's her landlord hong chow and she needs to replace the water heater in lizzie's apartment and lizzie keeps bringing it up and hong chow's like oh i'm gonna get to it i'm gonna get to it you know she's really kind of blowing her off the opening scene of this movie shows her setting up a tar swing and it's like supposed to make us think like you have time to do this but you're not gonna give your tenant hot water. Like, that's a really scumbag thing to do. Sick of not having hot water, Joe. It's such a total drag and such a shitty thing to do to a person. I'm sick of it. But Lizzie's character just kind of holds it in. She doesn't, like, let it come out. She throws backhanded comments at her, even though she kind of feels bad about it. But she's getting so fed up and frustrated. And this was very relatable to me because as somebody who hates confrontation, you know, the most you can really do is just, like, kind of throw a little bit of shade, a little bit of a sarcastic comment because you don't want to have that confrontation. But, of course, this movie is going to be building up to something like that. But don't expect this to be, like, one of those movies where we have these big scenes, these big flashy scenes. No, it's a very quiet reserved comedy drama that just gives you a peek into certain people's lives and just the regular day-to-day -day lives of certain people you know it could be very relatable to you and me it's not that kind of film it's very much just a nothing happens kind of movie and i love those kinds of movies a hangout movie where you just spend some time with these characters at a moment in time you don't know their past you know you kind of start to uncover it a little bit you kind of understand where these characters are coming from and that's really the fun of these kind of movies is trying to understand what these characters are like, what is getting them through the day-to-day. -day. And the cinematography of this movie is beautiful. It does feel like an A24 film in the sense that, you know, the colors are kind of very muted, a little bit faded, 
very beautiful in my opinion. It really captures Oregon, I think. And then the attention to detail. These are the things that I really absolutely love. Like there's a scene where like there's a sheet wrapped around the cushions on a couch. You know, the blanket's kind of thrown all over the place. The paint's like coming off the windows. Like all that stuff just feels real. It doesn't have that clean look to it. And I just absolutely eat that up. That's the kind of stuff that I like to go to the movies for. Is just to see how they had paid attention to every single detail. And they really did a great job in this film. And speaking of Andre 3000, he is a phenomenal actor. Actor. When he pops up, like you really care about him in this movie, and it's really strange. You know, he plays a really just a real nice guy, and I loved his character in this movie. He's not in it too much, but I really did appreciate him. Everyone does a good job. It is funny because the way they all deal with conflict is so different than in the region of the world that we deal with conflict. I live in New York, and I just feel like people are always like, you know, especially even at my regular job, you know, people will always just yell at each other when they're very frustrated with each other, and then we get over it. But these people, they kind of seem to hold it in, or they even communicate their feelings very well. It's just very different from the world that I have to live in in my day-to-day -day life but it's also really cool that we get to peek behind the curtain and see how these people are living their lives so I thought that that was very interesting and I think Kelly Reichardt did a great job in her fourth team up with Michelle Williams and again Michelle Williams is the standout performance in this movie. It's not a flashy performance. She probably only smiles like once or twice in this movie, but you really can just feel where she's coming from. And I really think this is a very special movie, one of the best films of 2023. But just know that this isn't going to be a movie for everybody. If you're into A24 slow-paced dramas, then you are going to absolutely love this one. If you're not into that, then you're probably not going to like this movie. But if you are, I can highly recommend it. But we're also going to talk about this A24 exclusive 4K Blu-ray that just came out. I'm enjoying my retirement. <laughs> I get up, I do a little of this, a little of that. So this is actually only the second A24 exclusive shop 4K Blu-ray that I've ever bought. And the reason is actually, I'm not a big fan of what A24 does with their packaging. I have the lighthouse and hey, you know how it looks like a book and you can't really put that on the shelf. It's kind of got to have its own spot. Same thing with the Midsommar 4K Blu-ray. You know, that can't really fit on a shelf. It's got to have its own spot. And I'm not a really a big fan of that, but I really did appreciate that they kind of put this in standard packaging. So if you look right here, it's beautiful, by the way. I really love the, you know, the, almost the pastel colors, a little bit warmer than regular pastel colors, the pinks and the greens. You come inside, you get this really nice digibook right here. I mean, I love the artwork right there. You get the tire swing. You open it up. It's only one 4K disc, no Blu-ray. And you also get some uh, really nice... If you come inside here, you get some really nice drawings. There's a bunch of them in here. You see them at the very opening credits of the movie of what her sculptures are going to end up looking like. So she has them all drawn out right here. You get them all right here in this little like side panel. Really nice stuff. I really appreciate all the artwork that they did with this. I mean, the packaging is phenomenal. The only thing with Digibooks, and everyone who knows Digibooks knows, they kind of start to get a little bit bent on the corner. The cardboard gets a little bit messed up. And I always appreciate the Digibooks, but that can be a little bit frustrating. You know it's going to get worn out over time, but... That's just how it's going to be, and I still really appreciate the packaging on this A24 exclusive. And again, you can really only buy this through A24, so they kind of control the pricing, and this was $34.99. And, you know, I complain about other studios and what they charge and what they give you. And they don't really give us too much with this one as far as extras go. We only get a commentary track. And, you know, it's a good commentary track. I really actually wanted to hear it because I actually found the movie so fascinating. I wanted to hear all of Kelly Reichardt's thoughts on it. You get a couple of short films and that is it. No making of documentaries. So I'm a little bit disappointed by that in comparison to the price. The movie itself, when you watch it, and the 4K is gorgeous. They do give us a Dolby Atmos track, and that's the only audio track on here, so I assume that if you don't have Dolby Atmos available to you, it's just going to downgrade it, because the only other track that's on here is uh, Spoken Dialogue, so that way, you know, it can help for the hearing impaired, which I really appreciate. I really love accessibility options. Paramount is the king of this. Accessibility options, making everyone feel included. That's one of the things I always preach here on the channel, whether it be for the visually impaired, the hearing impaired. That's something that you should always be trying to help those people out so they can experience film as well so I always appreciate that Paramount is the kings of that they need they deserve to be praised for that and then the visuals now the visuals for this movie like I was saying it's an A24 film and it kind of has that look of elder A24 films where it kind of just feels flat and you know the colors are supposed to feel muted like you know, there's nothing in here that's gonna pop out at you nothing that's too just dynamic you know it's actually got this level of grain throughout the entire 4k that I think works for this movie but it could be distracting for other people I think for the overall set of the film I think it works out perfectly and I just understand that a lot of people are probably not going to love it but I appreciate it I actually really appreciated the visuals on this 4k as well but it's just not the most flashy of visuals and that's why I think people are going to get really caught up in this but I really do think that they captured the visual style that they were going for the resolution is perfect that's where the 4k is doing the most work it's got HDR 10 it's got Dolby Vision and I tested it out on two 4k players and I thought it was beautiful but it's beautiful in its own right it's not going to be something that you compare to John Wick 
Fantastic Four or or Across the Spider-Verse. It's just not that kind of movie. And that's the same thing with the Adobe Atmos track. You know, there's a little bit of score in this movie, but really where the Atmos track is doing work is, you know, when she's outside or Han Chao's outside and you can hear the leaves in the background and it makes it feel like you're outside with them. I really think they did a great job on the mix. The dialogue is crisp and clear. So I really have no complaints. It's just, you know, again, it's not that kind of movie. So if you're going to be comparing this to Top Gun Maverick or any other kind of movie, it's just going to feel a little bit underwhelming to you on the visuals and on the audio. But for what this film is, I think they captured it perfectly. And this is one of those special films of 2023. But like I said in the film review, it's not for everybody. So if you're not really into A24 films, if you've watched Lamb, and other slow-paced A24 films, then this one's just not going to work for you. And that's understandable. Everybody has different taste in films, so don't feel like you're obligated to check this one out just because it's one of those films that people are saying is the best of 2023. Film is subjective. Everybody has different taste. So if you don't like regular A24 films, or maybe you saw Waves a couple years ago and you didn't think it was that great, and, you know, maybe it's just not your style. Completely understandable. Don't feel guilty about that. But if you are a fan of these films, check this out. And I can definitely recommend the 4K Blu-ray. I'm not too happy with the price of it. But that's what you get for buying it through A24 exclusively. And, you know, they get to control the market. And, you know, you're helping out A24. They're one of the smaller studios. If you've seen lately that, you know, they have to start making a little bit of bigger budget films just to get the money to make movies like this. You know, movies like this aren't for everybody. So the taste in it. It's going to already draw in a niche audience that, you know, it's not going to draw the bigger crowd. So to help out a smaller company like A24, I never mind doing that. And I really think that they gave us most of the bells and whistles, but I still do feel uh, it's just a little bit hard to justify that price. So overall, I still have to give this 4K Blu-ray a solid 8 out of 10. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for being here with me on another episode of Let's Talk. I want to thank my three producers, John Do Juggalo, Jason Martin, and Frank Rodriguez, my channel director, Kevin Kruger. If you guys want to join the ranks with them, you can do that. We have channel memberships in the description below, or you could, or you could just click that join button. You can also just become a friends of the channel. That's only $2.99 a month. That helps to support us financially as well, so we can keep bringing you these beautiful 4K Blu-ray reviews. And for all of our channel members, we're going to be putting your name on a magic wheel this Thursday that's tomorrow we're gonna put your name on a magic wheel we're gonna spin that bad boy the name it lands on they get to win a copy a sealed copy of Mean Streets on 4k blu-ray from the Criterion Collection that will be signed sealed and delivered by me through the United States Postal Service so you guys will see that video on Friday during a regular digital code giveaway and my review of the naked gun on 4k blu-ray and thank you guys all so much if you can't support us financially that is no problem at all the best way to support us is just by liking this video subscribe to the channel, getting out in those streets, and telling your friends about us. We will be seeing you around. Yeah.